groove. What is it? Why do some tracks sound like this? And some tracks sound like this? Today we're gonna to find out, so stick around. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into groove. We're gonna look at what is groove and what are the variables that go together to make something groovy. Groove is a very subjective and somewhat intangible characteristic of a track, but we all know it when we hear it. Speaking of groove, if you like the track that's playing, it's a groovy deep house one of mine on Steve Bugg's label Sublease. Currently doing really well in the Beatport charts, so if you feel like grabbing a copy, it would mean a lot. Link in the description. As always, you can grab the project files from my Patreon for this video. There's a link in the description, so go check it out. Now let's jump into Ableton and make some groove. All right, so here we are inside Ableton, and this is a little project I've put together to demonstrate some fundamental ideas that go into making up groove. As I said at the start, groove is a subjective and somewhat theoretical concept. But what I'm gonna do is try and establish some foundational concepts that go into creating up groove. Some tangible things that you can implement to help bring groove into your tracks. So the areas that I've identified as being fundamental to groove are sound selection, velocity, placement, swing, and tension. So let's jump in and have a look. In order to identify sample selection, what I've done here is prepared three different loops. They are very basic loops with a kick, hat, and clap pattern. Just your standard basic house and techno groove. So let's take a listen. It pretty much has no groove, but what I'm gonna demonstrate is that depending on the sounds and how well they work together, even the most robotic and fundamental simple pattern can have the essence of groove. So here's an example of something that I feel has no groove. It was very robotic, not really making me wanna bob my head. It's not that nice to listen to. Now here's an example of a classic groove. This is a 909, kick, clap, open hi-hat, and these elements just work so well together, which I think is why the 909 has stood the test of time. It's been the backbone of house and techno for decades now. So it's just as simple as the first one, but somehow it kind of rolls together and the sounds work well together, they fit well together. I know which one I'd rather listen to. In order to demonstrate what I would say is a good groove, I've put together the same three elements coming from Underground Shades of House, my sample pack. So we've got a kick, clap, and open hat, and let's take a listen to how they sound. So in my opinion, they're all working really well together. It's got the same feel as the classic 909, but a bit more modern and polished. There's no extra elements here. It's the same three elements, kick, clap, and hat. They just work well together. Link up here if you wanna pick up that sample pack too. By comparing these three simple loops, we can see how important sound selection is to creating groove. So I've recreated that same simple backbeat from my sample pack. And I'm gonna add some more elements and illustrate some of my other points. To demonstrate velocity, I'm gonna add this shaker. So in the first example, we've got 16th notes with no velocity, or the same velocity. Very robotic sounding, right? So let's add that to our drums. Now here I've prepared a bunch of different examples with variations in velocity. And we're gonna to listen to those. And what we'll demonstrate here is how changes in velocity really impact the groove despite playing the same 16th note pattern. So in this example, I've kept the offbeat the same and lowered the other notes to create some variation. Let's see how it sounds. So just doing that to create some very simple dynamics already adds some groove. Now this is a much more classic shaker pattern. We've got medium, low, high, low. See, it feels more bouncy. Now to illustrate the point further, I've added a couple more patterns. This one is similar to the last, but has the downbeat accentuated instead of the offbeat. This is a very common pattern for tambourines. Let's take a listen. 
See how it changes the feel and the groove of the track by accentuating that downbeat. Now this next one rises in velocity over the 4 16th. This is a very common pattern in Afro House. Let's take a listen. So the last three add quite a lot of groove, but all give a very different feel to the track. This is always my preference. Now it's time to look at the importance of placement. Firstly, I'm going to add this snare. We can see it's, it's been placed on the 16th notes, which is going to provide contrast against this very simple backbeat pattern. Let's take a listen. Now this starts to add more groove because it's creating contrast against that very rigid 4-4 pattern. Now I've prepared another example with this closed hat, which is doing a very similar thing to the snare, but just in different parts of our loop. So you can hear now that that's creating call and response with the snare. If I just play the kick and those two elements together, It already sounds kind of cool and groovy, right? And you can really hear that call and response. It's going one, one, two, two, one, 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 two, two, one, one, one. To add some more complexity to the groove, I've added this percussion element. Now you'll notice this is not accentuating the 16th notes, this is accentuating the offbeats, but only certain offbeats. And it's still working in relationship with the snare and the closed hat to accentuate different parts of the loop. So you can really hear those three elements are working together, interacting. They're in different areas of the frequency spectrum. They're playing similar but not identical patterns at different times throughout the loop. So they each have space. So let's listen to everything together. Now I'm going to add this clave element, and you can see here playing on the off beats, the same as the open hi-hat. When I add this in, it's going to feel a bit robotic. Kind of creating this on off on off robotic feel with the hi-hat a bit more than the open hat does now i'm going to add this other pattern which introduces some lower velocity 16th notes and listen to how this changes the groove instead of creating more of a robotic feel it now creates much more groovy feel A little bit loud, so I'm just going to turn it down. This type of element we want to sit back in the groove. Very nice. So, the next foundational element of groove I feel is swing. So, what I'm going to do is select all of these clips and add some swing from the groove pool. Let's have a look at what this is doing. If I drag this groove onto one of my MIDI clips, we can see here the groove represented as MIDI. So let me just loop it and crop to one bar. So now we can see that all of these 16th notes, every other note is being pulled forward slightly off the grid, while the downbeat and the offbeat remain 100% quantized. So let's take a listen to how that sounds. Much without it, it feels much more robotic. Now with the swing. There's a lot more push and pull happening in the loop. So it can be really helpful adding groove to your loop by using one of these swing templates. But if you have everything swinging at the same time, it may feel a bit more groovy, but still in a robotic way. It lacks humanization. It lacks... Tension. So to demonstrate tension, there's two things. 
One is a bit more of like a question and answer type thing, which I'm using this bass to demonstrate. So the bass is playing some notes. This here is where the percussion's hitting, so we don't want that. I'll just use this to show us where that's happening. What we're gonna hear when we listen to the bass is that there's a pause in this area here. That pause will leave us wanting something, which will then be provided when that note plays in the second bar. Let's take a listen. So that adds some tension. If I halve the loop and just have that note play every time, it doesn't have the same tension. Feels more robotic. Now another way that's simple and easy to add tension to your groove is by using a loop, a top loop, a percussion loop. So what we're gonna do is listen and find something that works. So we're gonna audition some top loops and we'll see that the things that sound good are providing some contrast and tension against what we already have. Let's take a listen. So this one sounds great. It's got some elements that are playing against our loop. I'll drop that in and see if we can find another one. So with this one, Delta 120, we can hear it's also adding tension, but it's adding too much tension. It sounds chaotic. The reason that the Epsilon loop works and the Delta loop doesn't work is because it satisfies a combination of all of these foundational elements of groove. It has sound selection. The characteristics of the sounds in the loop work well with what we have. It has velocity. It has dynamics within the loop. Using placement, it has these different bongo fills within there. It definitely has swing, but it's a different swing to what was being used with the rest of the elements, so it provides some kind of contrast and tension. Now with this type of element, what I would do is just add it in very subtly to create some nuance to the groove. You can hear there, it complements what we've already got, but when these bongo fills play, it feels a bit awkward, a bit uneasy, which creates tension. But it's not too much tension that it feels wrong. So hopefully that was interesting and easy enough to follow along with. If you want to jump in here and have a look in more detail, these project files will be available on my Patreon. The project files from all of my tutorial style videos are available on Patreon. There's just loads there. So jump in, have a look. Also, you may have noticed I'm wearing different headphones in this video. The good folks over at III were kind enough to send over a pair of their Wireless Plus for me to check out. And I've got to say, I'm pretty blown away by them. There's no cables, which is amazing. <laughs> Means I can get up and walk around if I want. I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> also, there's nothing banging on my lapel mic, which is so frustrating in post-production. So glad we don't have to worry about that anymore. But the thing that really blew me away about the headphones is how good they sound. They're really, really good. Super clear, super punchy, very high fidelity, massive soundstage. If you're in the market for headphones, definitely worth a look. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully it demystified the concept of groove a little bit. Let me know in the comments which producer just nails this the best. Who's got the grooviest beats? If you like this video and you're looking for something to watch next, then check out this. You're gonna like it. That's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.